I've got Jessica on the show today. She wants to talk about local admin passwords, but I have no idea why she wants to talk about that. I guess we'll find out. Oh, well. On with the show. Hi, guys, and welcome to the show. We have Jessica Payne back. Hi, Jessica. Hi. Nice to see you again. So this is, this is actually, I'm not sure how these shows will actually end up being sequenced when they're released, but this is the first time, I think, that we've ever done the same guest twice in a row. I'm, I'm, a, I'm an innovator, I guess. <laughs> well, we were talking about Slam, and you mentioned the, the admin password thing, and uh, that sounded pretty intriguing. I don't really know what you're going to talk about today uh, in, in reference to admin passwords, but I'm sure it's going to be great. And uh, I'm sure it's going to be interesting because the last episode is just flying off the shelves. I mean, we've got 50,000 views, I think, so far. So pretty excited. Yeah, I think this one is something that relates to a lot more people, too, because the local administrator password solution isn't something you have to be a premier customer to get your hands on. It's something that we've released to the public for free to address a really big problem. And that's the fact that when most people build their computers and their enterprise, they have matching local administrator passwords everywhere. So the bad part about that is a single piece of commodity malware, one person who dumps passwords in that environment would have access to everything out there, which is pretty terrifying because you can use you know, Bing to find out how to dump those passwords quite easily. And I'm actually going to show that to you a little bit later. Uh, but when we have been releasing documentation for years about how to stop problems, stop the things you heard about in the slam video where an attacker gets onto the network on one machine, moves about the whole network. We've always said, randomize your local administrator passwords, period. And we never had a way to do it. So there are lots of third party products that do the job and do the job really, really well, but we've never had one to do it. And on May 1st, we actually released a solution. It's written by uh, a developer named Yuri Formacek. And it's a beautifully elegant, simple solution, fully supported by Microsoft, that's a way for you to randomize a local administrator passwords on workstations and servers. So hugely exciting. Yeah, that's really cool. And it, it sounds to me like this isn't necessarily a technology problem. Really, it's more of a human behavior problem. It's a little bit of a technology problem, too, actually, because they're, the tools that we have, if you're building your workstations with something like the Microsoft Deployment Toolkit, there's a way to set that password one time to something random, and then you never know it again. But there are no ways to do it live on the wire other than laps that we support that are really, really safe ways to do it. There's some scripts you could do. I meet a lot of customers who have like custom solutions to do it, but there, there was never the right hammer for the job, and now we have that. That's awesome. Well, I can't wait. Yeah, so we, we, we're going to walk through how to install it today. I thought that would be a really good thing to show because it laps is so blindingly simple that uh, we will be able to, in a space of 10 minutes or less, install it in a domain and have it working. Uh, so we'll do that. We'll talk a little bit about how the solution works, and I thought I'd show you how the attacks against the solution works as well because uh, laps got a lot of traction on the Internet, but I think it might have been a little bit misunderstood by the security community. So I wanted to talk about exactly exactly how you would attack before and after laps as well. That's awesome. I can't wait. Let's get started. So LAPS is a fully supported official Microsoft product. It's, it's totally going to be supported. If you want to call into the CSS queues, if you're a premier customer, we've got that for you. As If you've watched the SLAM video we did uh, last week or a couple weeks ago, you know that LAPS is part of the SLAM offering. So this is definitely not a fly-by-night sort of solution. This is something that you can feel comfortable putting in your environment because it's going to remain supported. So the solution itself, it's, it's actually really elegant to in because all it is is it's a group policy extension and the DLL to randomize the passwords. And why I like that is because there's less attack surface than many other tools that do the exact same thing. There's less features too, so don't get me wrong, I'm not in any way, shape, or form saying that this is the same as maybe a CyberArk or a Lieberman. But for some of our medium size or smaller size customers, when you actually have to introduce something into the environment that includes a SQL server or a website or or those sort of things, that's 
that's more attack surface. That's more to manage and that's more to secure. When you use LAPS, that's storing the passwords right in Active Directory. That's the same thing that if you watch the Mark Simos talks or the talk we did last time, that's your single set of crown jewels anyway. You really need to be protecting Active Directory. So if we store the passwords in AD, that's only one thing to focus on. And the LAPS solution is really designed with least privilege. It just does what it needs to do and it does it securely. A computer account can only write its password. It can't read it even if it's compromised. And I think that, you know, especially for the fact that the security landscape right now is, oh my gosh, everything, I have to secure everything. The less to worry about is actually better in my opinion. So I really, really like this. Yeah, absolutely. Pretty cool. It sounds great. Yeah, it's, and, and like I said, you're going to see that it's only going to take us like 10 minutes to install it, too. One more, one more question for you. You said that it's implemented via group policy or it has a group policy component? Yep. That's correct, okay. yes. So what it is is um, there's actually a client-side extension which gets installed on the machines that you need to manage. And that client-side extension actually handles the randomization of the passwords and resetting the passwords. But there's group policy templates that will allow you to configure, you know, how long do I want the password, how, how often am I going to change it. So the cool thing about that is just about every one of our customers has group policy in their environment. They'll have at least one group policy because it comes with AD. So it's not, you know, going to be some, you know, third party additional piece of software that they have to do a different console or something like that. It's it's a group policy. It's something very easy and, you know, it's, it's very much that whole, you know, these are free tools. Uh, just like everything we talked about, you know, in the slam engagement, the pass the hash white papers. This is just using the investments you've already made and then adding that one client side extension so you can randomize the passwords. So it's a good learning curve too. It doesn't take a lot of work for an IT organization to get this into their environment. Cool. Thanks yeah. for that description. Oh, no, great, yeah. So the uh, the one thing I did want to point out, though, is, is that LAPS only addresses local account passwords. Service account passwords, your shared admin passwords, all those other things. Local accounts are only part of the credential theft problem. So implementing LAPS, easy, really great to do, but you're still going to have to come back and do that things we talk about in the securing lateral account movement engagement, the pass the hash white paper, those sort of things. Because if you only address the local accounts, absolutely someone's going to be able to come into your environment and still do things. We still need to have firewalls, least privilege, credential tiering, all that stuff to go with it. So, so making sure that we're quite honest with people here is very important. Yeah, and that makes sense, right? Because the local accounts are sto stored locally on the box. They're not stored on a DC. They're, they're accounts that are stored locally. Mm -hmm. they're, they're stored locally in the SAM database. That's actually on the physical machine. So if somebody even gets your you know, workstation, if you don't have your workstations encrypted, somebody can boot off a disk and get those passwords. So And the other thing is local administrator passwords don't necessarily follow password policies. Local right. account passwords don't necessarily have the same password policies as the domain. So if you can get one of those and it matches on every computer, it's a very easy thing to do. So, yeah, definitely something that needs to be addressed, but it's only part of it. Yep. Okay. So the kind of the stuff that we, we, we snuck in a little bit early, but, you know, it's a client-side extension. You install it via MSI. And then there are ADM templates to manage the group policy. Uh, there's PowerShell commandlets for all the management and delegation in Active Directory, so very easy to use. And there's a cute little GUI that you can actually use to get the passwords out because once you randomize a password, you might need it again. So we store the password in Active Directory and you can get it out with the GUI. So very, very cool stuff. Now we do store the password in Active Directory, so we do have to extend the schema and add two more attributes for that. And those are the actual password and the expiration time. But these are fully supported schema modifications, so it's not, it's not a big deal. This is something that we'll stand by. Okay, so hang on. So we randomize the password locally, mm -hmm. but then we store that information in Active Directory. That's correct, yes. So that okay. way the password is still usable if the computer falls off the domain. Or I have some customers that are using it that actually made the local administrator password part of maybe like their help desk workflows. So instead of giving a group of 250 people local administrator on every workstation in the environment, they give them access to get the local administrator password in the rare instance that they actually do need admin rights versus just something like remote control. And then we audit that. We audit that they've checked out the password and we use Windows Event forwarding to actually get the event logs off of the client machines to see, you know, oh, an administrator did log in or something like that. Because 
Uh, for a very long time, we said don't use local passwords because a local account couldn't be tracked, that sort of thing. But as we're looking at the threat landscape now, I've had several customers on their own come up with really great ways where using the auditing capabilities, using Windows event forwarding, they were able to you know, reduce their attack surface more because they don't have a ton of people who could instantly be fished in there. They're kind of using that. So there are more workflows that get kind of opened up because of the fact that you know, the password's stored there and you can use it. Cool. Yeah. So what happens is that client-side extension, when it's told by group policy to change the password, it randomizes it, it checks that it can communicate to Active Directory, so in case it falls, you know, like network communication isn't there, it won't randomize the password, so nobody has to worry about that. And after it confirms it can communicate to Active Directory, it writes that password up there to that MSMCS ADM PWD attribute, and then it will set the password in the local SAM database, so it's going to be matching there. And then that expiration time attribute is actually what tells it, hey, the next time group policy processes, check this attribute, and if it says, hey, change my password again, go ahead and do that. So that's what those two attributes do. So that is a confidential attribute. Only domain admins can read it by default. I know it feels a little bit like death by PowerPoint here, but I, I promise this is the hardest part. No, um, no, this is actually <laughs> really good. Um, so by confidential, I guess you mean that somebody can't just fire up, you know, some tool to read attributes in the Active Directory and automatically get to this without the appropriate credentials? Exactly, and that's a really big part of the conversation to have around LAPS because it's a confidential attribute which means only domain admins can read it by default. So if you do not have rights to view a password, you won't see the password. And that kind of goes back to one of those points where I said I think LAPS got kind of a a bad, a, bad, uh, a bad handout to it on the internet because it does store that attribute in plain text. It is a plain text attribute in Active Directory. That is true. But when it's transmitted, it's actually encrypted on the wire. So a lot of people were like, oh, that's plain text. That's terribly insecure. And I'm a security person. I too understand that plain text can be bad, but it's the ACLs, it's the, the access controls that make this an okay, uh, more than okay, a great solution because if you have already lost the credentials that allow someone to view that local administrator password, it was already partial game over anyway. It doesn't matter if it's stored in plain text or not. So it's how we build you know, the appropriate delegation structure for who can view the passwords that, and then that auditing that makes this important. Because if somebody's walking off with your ntds.dit and the fact those are in plain text is part of their attack strategy anyway, they already had domain admin and domain admin already meant they could do anything they wanted anyway. Golden tickets, all that other stuff like that. So because it's a confidential attribute, only domain admins can read it by default, and then we do granular delegation for help desk people can only read certain machines or something like that. It really does make it okay. Yes, you know, it is plain text, but no one should be seeing it or even able to get to it unless they have already compromised your account and we should have detected it by that point anyway. Yeah, understood. Yeah. Sorry, I get it. I, I was, I'm, I'm, I'm having. I, I get a little bit, um, a little bit overly detailed on that one. <laughs> no, no, I think it's awesome, and the point you make is a great point, right? Somebody can't trace the wire and see it transmit because that is encrypted. Right, only, and that's the important part. The only time it's not encrypted is uh, when it's in in the DB, and the only people that can read the DB are people that have access to the DB. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, there, there, there is a scenario where somebody could use something like a hacking tool or even just LDP.exe and force it to go in plain text over the wire, but by that point, they've already compromised an account that had the rights to view the password. So it's a little bit of a silly attack at that point. Yeah, so we're safe. Yeah, we're, we're, we're safe, yeah. And, and, and it's another one of those things where, you know, there, there are organizations where the fact it's stored in plain text can, is important to them. You know, there's a regulatory compliance or something like that. But, you know, I, I always ask IT organizations to be realistic. You know, take a look at all the other threat vectors in your environment. If you haven't addressed, you know, firewalls on, on workstations and servers, local administrator groups, uh, using all those uh, principles we talk about in the past, the hash white paper, least privilege credential tiering, things like that. If you haven't addressed those, an attacker is absolutely going to use that long before they go after, hey, can I get the local administrator password that only works on one machine? I mean, that's the other take 
takeaway from this is after we have randomized those local administrator passwords, it's only going to be good on one machine. So if an attacker wanted to be moving about your network, going to every machine, you would be seeing, you know, event log saying that Bob looked at 1500 passwords because it's different on every machine. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. All right, so there's one more attribute and then we can go into the demo. Uh, and that attribute is the expiration time itself, because this actually tells it when to randomize the password the next time. And I, it's kind of boring. I just wanted to point it out there that it's stored in Microsoft time. So if anybody looked at that attribute, it's in the 100 nanosecond intervals that have elapsed since the zero hour on January 1st, 1601. Uh, so we use the little GUI to actually change that to human readable time. Yeah. That's <laughs> okay. a big number. That is a big number, yeah. It's, it's, like, it's like a randomly generated number, it looks like, so nobody ever knows what it is. Okay, so we can do the demo now. Let's install LAPS, see how easy it is, and then we'll show you some of the, the attack vectors for it. Yeah, I can't wait. I want to see it. So before we get to the demo, I just have one question. Yes. What, what's an ultra banana? <laughs> Ultra Banana is the name of my lab environment uh, because I used to play a lot of Street Fighter 4 and I needed a funny name and Ultra is a type of combo move and I figured if a banana was doing an Ultra that would be a pretty pretty sweet thing to do. <laughs> so the Street Fighter 4 is like Mortal Kombat I guess? It, it's more of a gentleman's game. Um, you know, they're, 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 there's, a, there's a definite art to playing Street Fighter. You can't get away with button mashing as much. So. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, meanwhile, you're going to get all sorts of angry comments on this video by Mortal Kombat fans. I didn't mean it that way. Sorry. Um. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's cool. I'm more of a, I don't know, I, I love Half-Life, Half-Life 2, you know, that type of stuff. Fallout, Fallout games. But, Fallout, Call yeah, of Duty, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that a lot, so... Okay, so, so back, to, back to business. <laughs> now that we've left the internet, no, I'm a nerd. Um, so, okay, so installing LAPS. Now you got nerd cred. I got nerd cred. I think I, I, think I had nerd cred. I'm a security expert. Um, <laughs> so the, uh, the, um, the idea here is that I'm actually on an admin PC. I'm logged into this as a domain admin account, and this is what we would call a privileged administrative workstation or a trusted workstation for this domain admin. Um, we have a good domain admin and a bad domain admin in this environment. Environment. Joe is the smart domain admin and Bob is the, the, the problem guy because Joe's logged into this trusted admin workstation and we're going to use that to install LAPS because we have to extend the schema to do that. So we're going to go to the domain controller and I'm actually going to find schema admins. Because your schema admins should be empty at all times. If you if you have people parked in your schema admins, that's really not uh, to best practice, and we we really don't want that um, you know in, in any of our documentation. So add yourself to schema admins to do this, and then if you're already logged on, you're going to need to log off uh, in order to get the new token that says that you're a domain admin. That's a that's one of those quirks of Kerberos. There we go, we're logging into the Contoso domain as a domain admin. And now I'm just going to go ahead and in this instance just double click on this installer right here. But this is just an MSI for LAPS. So as you go to put the client side extension in your environment, you can just use the, the, the quiet switches and install it via SCCM. Very easy to do. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. And obviously next here. And I do have to agree to the license agreement, that's an important part. Okay, so there are the options here, and we can see that we have admin PWD GPO extension. That's the actual client side extension. That's what does the password randomization. And you're going to need to have that installed on all the workstations and all the servers in your environment. Don't install it on domain controllers. We don't want to be randomizing the password on the domain controllers, even though there is a built-in administrator account in the domain, just because you'll have some issues with it updating attributes differently across the environment. So this goes on all the workstations and all the servers in your domain because in order to break that lateral movement of the bad guy we want to make sure that we have different passwords both on the workstation and the server tier. But since this is an admin PC I'm also going to install the management tools here and this is where I'll be able to view passwords, uh, work with the PowerShell commandlet so that I can add permissions to Active Directory and also get the GPO templates that allow me to um, you know put, put the settings in there. So I'll just do this entire feature on this guy. And we'll hit install. And 
And I should get a UAC prompt here, but um, I am running several VMs on a tiny little Lenovo X1 Carbon, so <laughs> any of the delays aren't to do the software, it's to do with me. Okay, so we've got that installed, and the only things that you're going to see different here is you're going to see the Laps UI, and that's where you'd actually go out and get the passwords. And if we went to Control Panel on this box, and we went and we looked for the uh, programs and features and what's installed on here, the alphabet is hard. Okay, you can see I have Local Administrator Password Solution installed here, but there's nothing to configure about it. And installing the password randomization client-side extension does not immediately start to randomize the password. So that really lets you do a phased rollout. You could blast this out throughout your entire environment, but until you make the GPO that says randomize passwords, it's not going to do anything. So that's really good, you know, from a IT organization phased rollout perspective. Okay. So now that that's there, uh, I will have the policy definitions, and I can want to copy those up to my group policy central store, just because that's going to make it easier for me. Like I said, this is this is not a hard thing to do at all. Um, the only challenges will be that you know, as you're dealing with, uh, you know, whether whether or not you. Uh, have a, a central store if you wanted to run this just locally and install it everywhere, but I like to do a central store. It makes it a little bit easier. Okay, so inside of Sysfall, I've already got my policy definitions up there because I've got a group policy central store. So I'm going to copy in the actual ADM template for the passwords, and then I'm actually going to copy in the ADML template as well, which is just the, uh, the formatting one. So... Okay, so what that did is that made it so anywhere that I edit group policy, I'm going to be able to see those templates for laps. I don't have to do it from a particular machine. And that's why a group policy central store is a really good thing to have because then you know that you're going to have consistent stuff across the entire environment. So now if I go into group policy management here, I'm going to be able to expand my domain. And you're going to see here that I actually have a, um, an organizational unit structure that's kind of defined around the things we talked about in the SLAM engagement. So since this is an admin workstation that I'm working on over here for Joe's machine, he's in a special restricted OU where regular help desk people wouldn't have the ability to attach a GPO to him because, uh, as you saw in that video, that's how you can you know, get people's credentials dumped and things like that. But we're going to go ahead and make a lapsed GPO so that we can start to randomize his password. And because I've never used this before, I'm going to see that prompt. Okay. So to configure laps, we have that installed. We've got the client-side extension installed there. Under administrative templates here, now I see laps. There are only four settings to configure laps, so it's, it's, not, it's not terribly difficult to configure here. And as a matter of fact, you only need one of these to start ri uh, randomizing the passwords, and that's enable local administrator password management. And if I check this and I go to enabled and don't configure anything else, this will start to every 30 days, it will randomize the local administrator account, that built-in local admin with the 500 SID, on this machine, it'll give it a 14 character randomly generated password and it will do it every 30 days. That's just by default. We, of course, can configure that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and enable that. How wide is the range of intervals? So actually the range of intervals that it can change or the frequency with which it changes is, is something that you can configure. So under password settings here, if I tick enabled, you'll see that I can configure how complex it is, you know, whether it's using capital letters or lowercase letters, but in the password length, and then the password age in days. So you can do the minimum of one day or the maximum of 365 days. So you could actually make this randomize every day if you wanted to. Okay. Yeah. So these are the defaults. This is what not configured would get you as well. And then there's name of administrator account to manage. Now this one's kind of tricky and that's why I thought we could talk about this one for a little bit because by default, the tool is gonna to find the built-in administrator account by SID. It's a well-known SID, it's already there. But a lot of times people have made a secondary local administrator account for, for maybe delegation of authority reasons or because they didn't want to use that well-known account. Um, whether whether or not that's you know the best idea from security you know there's 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 people in both camps because uh, people get very concerned about it having a well-known SID oh people can find the local administrator account 
as a non-administrative user, you can query all the accounts on a computer anyway. So if you are using that as a sort of a security measure, uh, it may not be providing everything that you're looking for there. So what, if you do have a secondary account, what you would do is you would type in the name of the account here and it would find that account by name. It would then not randomize a local administrator account that's built in. It will only randomize and store that one secondary account you had. So in conversations with a lot of my customers that I'm rolling this out with, and I've got some big ones that are doing it, it's been, well, you know, the reason that we had a different local account was so that the desktop guys could use this one and maybe the outsourcers could use this one and the server guys could use this one. You don't really need to worry about that as much anymore. So, you know, making sure that we're not, you know, dealing with uh, ideas that might not be as applicable now that LAPS is a solution and making sure that we're really threat modeling why we have them. It might make more sense to use that built-in local administrator account because it's always going to find it. If your local administrator account is named Bob and someone renames it to Steve, I won't randomize the password anymore with this. So it's it it, it might be in you know in my opinion and uh, you know this is what a lot of my customers have come to decide as well. Use the built-in local administrator account for your backdoor type of account because you know it's always going to have a randomized password. Somebody can't rename it to Steve and make sure it doesn't get its password changed. Yeah. Yeah. But if you have Steve, this is where you would put it, and that would that would take care of finding that account there. And yeah, then there's. That makes sense. So do not allow password expiration time longer than required by policy because if somebody has been given the rights to, you know, check out the password and then reset the password, you know, so that they make sure that it's different after they've used it. If they typed in, you know, 365 days, they might be doing that as a way to maintain backdoor access to the, the account. You know, if you've got a help desk person and they're like, oh man, you know, I just want to maintain administrative access to my own computer, let me set that to 365 days. If you check, the, check this box right here, it's going to say, I think you meant 30 days, and it's going to set that expiration time yeah. so that they can't keep the password for forever. So um, in the interest of, you know, Making making people upset. No, just kidding. No, in the interest of keeping your network more secure, I really don't think this is an optional option. This just makes sure that you know that expiration time that you're expecting is consistent throughout the environment. That's awesome. Can we see a demo of it? Yeah, I can show you what it would look like when we randomize the passwords. But I think it might be more interesting to show what happens when you're not randomizing them. Show what what an attack would look like, sort of before and after. I love showing attacks. All right. So I'm going to do my favorite way to do credential dumping. Um, you know, we're kind of limited by what we can show you because we're not really supposed to be here to teach you how to hack. Uh, so the way that this would really work in the real world with, uh, with you know, the attackers that are getting into the big companies, they'd send something like a phishing email or a drive-by attack that would take advantage of a vulnerability and elevate to system. I can't show you that part, so I have a command prompt running a system here. Uh, it's running as, as local administrator. But here's the cool part is I am actually going to create a PowerShell web object that's going to run a PowerShell script to dump the passwords. So as a person who's a forensics investigator, like this sort of thing is, will leave very little trace on the box, that kind of stuff like that. So it's a, it's a very scary kind of cool technique because all I'm going to do is, is if I, and I'm actually going to use those dangerous hacking tools cut and paste here, because if I actually paste in the, the text here, so it's PowerShell, it's creating a new web client, it's going to download a string, and this is actually, um, it's actually a, 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 a penetration tester's version of a PowerShell script that does dumping of credentials with the, the Mimikatz tool. So it actually does invoke Mimikatz to dump the credentials. So this is just, you know, running a PowerShell command on a computer to actually get this directly from the web. So if I hit enter here, it's going to take a minute because it's got to churn through it. This is, this, is, this is real time because this is actually how long it takes. Okay, so what do we have here? We have all of the credentials of everything that's logged on to this box currently. And this is the sort of stuff that can happen, you know, in, in most of the malware that you'll get, you know, from browsing the internet type of thing. But here we can actually see is this is Bob. Remember, Bob is the not-so-optimal admin. And he's logged in, and he's logged into the domain Contoso. 
And here says NTLM hash values, right? So these are, this is what you would use in pass the hash. This is how, you know, I would be able to use a pass the hash tool and get directly to another box on the network. But um, you can see that because of another legacy authentication protocol called W Digest, you can actually see in plain text Bob's very super secure password right here. And I talk a lot about how W Digest, it might even make more sense to an attacker to use that than NTLM, because if you've got something like advanced threat analytics in the environment that's detecting past the hash, if I can take that super secure password one right there and type that in and just be Bob, that's a great way to avoid detection there. So. I didn't have the administrator account logged in at the time that I did this, but if I did that, or if I run the SAM database version of this, I would be able to get out the local administrator password of this, uh, this box as well. And the local administrator password is in fact password one as well. So running a tool like this, getting it off of one machine, there's actually a version of this that can run against an entire domain in a single command that looks just like that. So that's why it's bad to have them all matching there. So what we can do is if we go in and we enable the password randomization, I'm gonna go over to this box that we set it up on. And if I do command prompt and I do run as a different user, so what, what rights did you run that script under? So that was actually just a user who had administrative rights on the box. Okay. So, um, so had that administrative rights on the local box. That's correct. Yes. So he he is you know an IT person. So he had admin box on, or admin rights on that box. He did elevate through UAC and do run as a different user, but that kind of minimizes how the real attacks would happen because the real attacks will happen through somebody taking advantage of a third party piece of software like Flash or Java using a vulnerability in that and getting those system level privileges by taking an elevation of privilege to something like the W32K.sys driver. So even though I just you know right clicked and accepted on UAC and all that stuff like that, that's not how it actually happens in the real world. A regular, regular old user without admin rights on their box could get a piece of malware that causes them to be able to dump those credentials like that. So you saw the actively logged on credentials, it'll dump the SAM database as well. Okay. So here's me logging on as the local admin over here on this box. So I definitely got logged in there. So this is, this is definitely password one is working there. So if we take this GPO that we created and we actually link it, and this is a lab environment, so replication won't be an issue. So now if I do GP up, whoa, I can't type, sorry. GP update slash force. I can then use the LAPS UI that we have here, which is the, the what you would give to your help desk or whatever if they needed to get those passwords out. So after I issue the GP update slash force and it gets the instructions to randomize the password, all I need to do is I can type in the computer name here, which was Joe Admin PC. I can search for it, and that's the password. That's the new local administrator password here, which I can cut and paste out. You can see that's a randomized, not so uh, not so intuitive password there. It's definitely not password one. You can see the next time that it expires, and if you wanted to, you could set a new expiration time there. So what that actually gets us is if I try to run that command prompt as a different user here, and I tried to use the old administrator account, so, you know, it didn't work there. Typing password one didn't work. So if somebody had been, you know, in the environment previously or been terminated or something like that, if they knew that password, that's not going to get them every single computer in the environment. And if I paste in that new password, the one that I got from LAPS, I can still use the local administrator account if I needed to. I'm definitely logged in as the local administrator there. So really, it, it, it seems very simple, but what you've done there is you've instantly broken a massive attack surface in the environment because the entire domain here, every single workstation had a matching password of password so that people could use it, so that they would find it, things like that. That's, that's a very common scenario in customer environments. It's not just my fake lab that, that happened in. So I was able to break that massive ability for lateral movement and I was able to still use the passwords when I needed to. So that's a pretty cool solution for free.
Yeah, and it, it's a couple of things to point out. Remember, we're just talking about the local admin passwords here, mm -hmm. right? So uh, that's number one. And number two, remember that in a lot of cases, admins build these boxes just with a script, right? And so, of course, all the passwords are going to be the same because they don't want to go out. I mean, if I have to go to each machine and touch each machine and create a separate password for it, that kind of breaks automation. Yeah, and that's why, you know, if your build process has something like MDT, Microsoft Deployment Toolkit, or something like that, that can take care of it. But, you know, the cool thing about LAPS is because it's going to be based on, you know, a group policy object, as if you add the DLL, if you add the client-side extension to the, the build process, as soon as that joins the domain and hits the right OU, it's going to be randomizing that password and storing it in Active Directory for you. So you'll be able to use it if you need to. It's, it's not something that you have to be like, oh, did I remember to read? reset the password because if you're relying on someone to reset the password there's going to be you know a bad day or something like that right yeah yeah absolutely got anything else cool for us um you know I, I could I could show you you know what it looks like when the administrators logged in and get that password and show how it doesn't work if you want but um but I think it's kind of more of the same you know is it's 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 definitely you know showing that what would happen if somebody did get into your environment is very important because a lot of times, you know, we don't think about, well, what will happen if somebody gets in? Because it's it's important to think about that. You know, what can they get access to? And if they can get access to a help desk person who has access to all the computers as local administrator, that's instant win. If they can get access to a matching local administrator password, that's instant win there. But the more protective controls you have, the more you can use them as detective controls as they start to hit up against them. So so if you combine something like LAPS with something like Windows Event Forwarding where we can collect, hey, did the local administrator successfully authenticate to this box? And at the same time, did I get an event 4662 from Active Directory, which is an indication that somebody read the local administrator password? So you can kind of get those correlating steps, you know, to, to see what would happen there because just as we talked about in the kind of the threat modeling thing you know what you get access to and how long it takes you to use that to compromise an environment is the more important thing to think about nowadays when we're building these defensive strategies is the more you slow them down the more walls they hit the more things you'll be able to alert on yeah yeah absolutely and that that's the name of the game right is detecting these types of attacks absolutely because it's 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 sad and it's true but it's true is that this it's kind of inevitable that at least one of your workstations is going to be hit by commodity or targeted malware that's going to be after your credentials and the i uh, you know i mean it's just the state of the world today and it's not that we can't stop it it's not that we can't use emmet or something like that it's you know emmet will definitely help you out there but it's very important to think about after I lose that first soldier, you know, how do I keep it from losing the war? And that's where, you know, making sure that you have this in place, you have laps in place, you have uh, other credential theft preventions in place is, is very important. Awesome. Okay. All right. Well, listen, where do people get laps? That is actually very easy because it's http colon slash slash aka dot ms slash laps. And I actually have a slide which will show you that and a bunch of other links that I think are important there. So you can get the local administrator password solution at aka.ms slash laps. You can get the pass the hash white papers at aka.ms slash pth. That's where it's going to talk about the lateral movement preventions. Uh, you know, if, if, you're, if you're not able to get the SLAM engagement, that'll help you out there. Best practices for securing Active Directory, all that credential hygiene, and then Emmet to stop that malware from getting in there uh, in the first place. But LAPS, easy place to go. You can get that right at the top link right there. Well, guys, that's the show for this uh, bye week because it's every two weeks. Um, I'd like to, again, thank Jessica for being our guest and uh, remind you that we do have a, uh, a, a Twitter account, so you can follow us on Twitter. That's at Taste of Premier, and uh, that's your Taste of Premier. <laughs>